Your kitchen's IQ is an overall score that tells you whether or not your kitchen is functional. It's based on eight categories, storage, organization, appliances, counter space, layout, lighting, efficiency, and aesthetics. In this video, I'm gonna give my kitchen an IQ score. I'm also gonna have my wife grade this kitchen and give it her IQ score so we can see what the difference is. Likely hers will be closer to the truth because my ego's involved and I'm a little biased. There's a broken microwave in our island that <sighs> serves as zero purpose. I don't okay. see that being efficient. Okay. And along the way, I'm going to give you tips that you can do even right now to help improve your kitchen's IQ score. The kitchen IQ is something I've made up and it's just for fun, but it does help us to think about these areas of our kitchen that we can look at to make more functional so that we can have just the best space possible. While your kitchen IQ score is somewhat subjective, the principles of functionality are foundational in creating a space that is optimized for your use. Okay, the first category is storage space. You have food, you have utensils, you have spices, you have trays, you have baggies, you have oven mitts, and you have pots and pans and glasses and bowls, and all this stuff needs to be stored somewhere. Problem is, you only have so much space in your kitchen to work with, and you have all kinds of stuff. So you either have to magically increase the space you have, or get rid of some of the stuff you have. You see where I'm going with this? It is time to declutter your kitchen and get rid of some of the things that are just wasting that space you already have. You will be surprised that by decluttering a little bit, you will gain so much extra wasted space that you can increase the capacity of your kitchen pretty easily. In the category of storage, my kitchen gets a grade of eight out of 10. Give me your honest opinion. No problem. <laughs> Will do. She doesn't know my score, so we're gonna do this together with these little whiteboards and uh, see what uh, see what the real kitchen IQ is for this kitchen. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, so the first category is storage. Oh, okay. You've already got an answer? I got an answer. Okay, what is it? Show the... Seven out of 10. Seven. I, I scored it an eight out of 10. Okay, why'd you score it so high? <laughs> because... <laughs> Because we have a pantry. We do. That stores pretty much everything we need. Yeah. We have lots of cabinets that we don't really even use, like to their potential. We have a big pot, like drawers for pots and stuff, mm -hmm. and bowls. It's only one thing we can't store. What's that? That skillet thing. Yeah, the skillet and the, the juicer and the instant pot and things like that. It'd be nice to have a spot for those things. Some of us are not naturally organizationally minded. I'm certainly not. I am basically a mess. <laughs> I am not organized at all. I find it very challenging to stay organized. Thankfully, my wife Amy is really, really organized and we kind of balance each other out. And in the kitchen, this is no different. If it wasn't for her, what you see behind me would literally be a shambles 100% of the time. Knowing how to organize your space is one thing, and there's many hacks and helps out there available on the internet, on YouTube, that you can watch creators who make great content on organizing. And I say that if you have trouble with this, you should definitely look to that. But one way to help organize the flow in your kitchen is to have dedicated work zones. I don't just mean the cleaning zone and the prep zone, but work zones in your kitchen that house the things that belong for those particular tasks. A simple one would be a coffee zone or a coffee bar. Having all the items that are dedicated to making coffee in one location. For some of you, this seems very obvious. Well, yes, I'm gonna have all the things for coffee in one place, but there's a lot of us out there who are just scattered and that stuff gets everywhere. So being focused on creating these specific zones in your kitchen for the tasks that you wanna complete is really, really helpful. And when it comes to kitchen design, here's a really great tip. If you have a narrow drawer bank, you should make the drawers shallower, increasing the amount of drawers that are there in the first place. So an 18 inch drawer bank should have four drawers. This is a blanket statement, but you'll get the point here in a minute. If you have four drawers that are 18 inches wide, they're not going to be as deep. But if you have a deep drawer that's 18 inches wide, it's just more digging around because there's less things you can store in a deep 18 inch wide drawer. 
Whereas if the drawer was 36 inches wide and deep, there are bigger things and better things you can store in that space that don't require digging around in, such as pots or small appliances. So if you're creating a kitchen and you want to create organization in that kitchen, make sure that your narrow drawer spaces are shallower and your wider ones are deeper. Now again, there's cases for doing it other ways, but this is a general rule that will help you stay organized because smaller things fit better in a smaller drawer bank and bigger things fit better in a bigger drawer bank. I give my kitchen a score of nine out of 10 in organization. And basically it's because of my wife. Thanks. Organization. Hmm. Okay, you ready to reveal your answer? <laughs> <laughs> you are scoring higher than mine. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Seven out of ten. But here's why. I scored a nine out of ten. I organize it really well, and then you and the children come behind me and just destroy everything. So I find keeping it organized a challenge. But I guess if it was just... Well, I want you to know something. Because I told everyone in this video prior to this that the reason I scored it a 9 out of 10 is because of you. <laughs> and that if it was up to me, it'd be in shambles. Oh my gosh, yes. I'm always, it's terrible. If I clean it and it's, you know, the cupboards are done, I have everything in its place, but then I can go back within a day. It's like I never touched it. But it's not just you. It's the children as well. Hear that, kids? <laughs> We have the spice drawer, yep. which is really good. I like keeping our bowls and plates and stuff in the drawers. I find that really good. We mm -hmm. have like the like the stabilizer things for them. Mm -hmm. And then we have the thing for the pots and pans, like to keep all the lids. Again, when I put so, stuff away, it's is your score still seven or is it better than that? <sighs> it's pretty good to organize. Okay, I'll go up. What are you going with? I'll give it a nine because it is it is pretty good for organization. Uh -huh. But if you guys go behind me, then it goes down. Okay, there you go. Appliances are an integral part of every kitchen. I mean, that is what the kitchen's all about. It's a bunch of wood and stone and other things that surround your appliances. When I'm designing a kitchen, the first thing I'm thinking about is where are the appliances going? Where's the most reasonable, logical, efficient, fluent, functional place for these things and then everything else goes around that. Now, maybe there's not a whole lot you can do about the quality of your appliances. You could be stuck with what you have or you're upgrading. If that's the case, I just suggest you try to find the best quality appliance that you can for the price that you're looking to pay. Do your research, read reviews, try to sift through all the information to get the best possible appliance package you can. But when it comes to the actual placement of those appliances in your kitchen, you'll wanna pay attention to a few rules and guidelines. Make sure that you have landing area on both sides of your sink and your range. When it comes to fridge placement, I like to have the fridge in a location that's the most accessible for everybody else in the home, not only just the person doing the cooking. So that anyone else in the home does not have to interrupt the person doing the cooking to get to the fridge and interrupt the workflow and the efficiency of the space. So burying your fridge inside your kitchen may not always be the best solution. Having it somewhere on the outskirts of the layout could be a great idea. My appliances score a seven out of 10, basically because of the microwave. It broke in the first four years and it's like a $2,000 microwave and it's in a base cabinet. Now, I often say a base cabinet is a pretty good place for a microwave, but you know what? I'm six foot one, it's a little low. I don't honestly love it. I think a microwave should be a little bit higher, not over the range but a little bit higher than in a base cabinet. So for that, seven out of 10. Okay, the next category is appliances. Okay, what about them? Just overall. Overall, like do I like them? Do I- Overall. Do I like, what about the microwave? Appliances. <laughs> oh. Okay. You got it? I got it. Eight. Mm -hmm. What'd you give it? Seven. <laughs> Why'd you give it a seven? Probably the same reason I gave it an eight. Um, the microwave broke. Yes. That was not good. I don't know if I'm super happy with its placement either. That's a different issue, but yeah. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of the base cabinet microwave. I find it low. It's a little low. Yeah. And the other appliances are okay. 
Yeah, the thing about the stove, though, is I don't know why, but the steam or whatever, it makes the floor wet. Yeah, wet. Yeah, wet. So yeah. I don't know about that. But I do like that I have a double oven. I, I like that. I love our fridge. It's big. Um, you know, it's techy. So it's that's, techy. That's cool, I guess. Yeah, they're just middle-of-the-road appliances. Yeah, but the microwave, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it in the base cabinet again. And, and it broke. It broke, so now it's just there, and I want it gone. Okay, let's so, move on. If you want to open that up, we can do that. <laughs> That'll be another video. <laughs> okay. Can you keep track? I'm keeping track. Okay. One of the main parts of every kitchen, including yours, including mine, is counter space. And how much of it do you have or not have is going to create your score for this category. But don't just look at the amount of counter space you have. You need to look at it in these four little mini categories. One is the prep surface. Do you have enough prep surface to do the tasks that you need to do? Now, it is said that you should have about 36 inches or a meter of prep surface that is dedicated to doing those tasks. And if you have that, that's a good thing. A second to that is having landing zones. Areas where you can put down things that are not part of the prep surface. They don't overlap. You should have anywhere between 15 and 24 inches of counter space that is dedicated to landing area. The third type of countertop is service or social. Places where you put down your cup of coffee when you're chatting with your friend, places where your family gathers to eat breakfast, maybe this is an island overhang or a peninsula, somewhere in your kitchen that is dedicated to just that social environment and engagement. This isn't vital to a functioning kitchen, but it is an aspect that is involved in many kitchens and can create a more functional environment overall. The fourth area for countertops is storage. Now I'm not talking about storage like your pantry, but the things you store on your countertop. Many of you, including myself, will store things like coffee makers or toasters or kettles or your Vitamix or your blender on your countertop. They stay there forever. They don't get put away in some drawer or some cabinet or down in the garage. They are permanently on your countertop because that's where you use them and they're the most functional to be there. So do you have space for that? Or are you constantly moving those things out of the way to use it for prep or landing area? In my kitchen, countertops get a seven out of 10. I have pretty good countertop space, but I could always use a little bit more in each of these areas. Okay, the next category is counter space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think you wrote an eight. I didn't. Okay, give, give it to me. Nine. Did you seven. <laughs> seven. Why so low? I, I have my reasons. So I like our island, and I yes. feel like no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm cooking or baking or whatever, like there's tons of space on the island. Yeah. We have our little junk corner. Yeah. I don't like that. No. Um, but that goes in the organization category. <laughs> I like our island too, but I think it could be bigger. Ah, uh, this, like this could always be bigger. Yeah, I know. Okay, well. So are we getting an addition? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, ready for the next one? I am. What was that, a nine I gave it? Okay. Yes. All right. I'm surprised. If you cannot see what you're doing in your kitchen, you are going to have problems. Fairly obvious. You turn on the lights to do your tasks, you turn them off when you leave. Lighting is an often ignored part of kitchen design because we think, well, it's just going to fall into place. It's just going to happen. But it's not going to happen if you don't plan it properly. There should be some combination of artificial and natural light. The bigger the window you can fit in your kitchen, the better, but that's not always possible. So you have to supplement with artificial light, and of course it will be nighttime eventually, and you have to turn those lights on. When it comes down to the most important lights that you should put in your kitchen, I say task lighting is absolutely important. Maybe the number one most important light source for your space, because that's what the kitchen's about, doing these tasks. Yes, it's also pretty to look at and you want to have some ambiance and all that stuff. But if you can't see what you're doing or you're creating shadows while you're doing those things, it's not going to be as functional as you'd like it to be. So under cabinet lighting for task purposes and pot lights in positions that make sense. Not creating a shadow by being behind you, but casting a beam between you and the countertop or the surface or the area that you're working on. And think about color temperature. I prefer a cool light something that has a higher Kelvin temperature for doing tasks on my countertop and a warmer light for just the room light itself. But you can play with that and figure out what the best combination is for you 
just know that there's a lot of options out there and think about it sooner rather than later. Plan it out with your designer as you're doing that process. Now I have great lighting in my kitchen, but one of my regrets is that I didn't make that window a whole lot bigger. And one of my pot lights I put in the wrong place. It kind of bugs me, but not that big a deal overall. But for that, I give the lighting in my kitchen a score of eight out of 10. The next category is lighting. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. A 10? Yeah. I only put an eight. Why? Wow, I'm a better designer than I thought. <laughs> There's pot lights in front of like all of the cabinets. Yes. They were strategically placed so that when we open up the pantry and we pull out the drawers, that the lighting is like directly on top of the drawers. Yes. We have nice, like an island light fixture. Yes. We have the lighting in the, the vent hood over the stove. Yeah. Plus we have a big window there, a big window there. Okay. Wow. 10. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think we have great lighting. Why? What, why did you give it an eight? Because we don't have under cabinet lighting. Which we probably could yeah, use. But is it necessary? Well, kind of. I tell people it is, so. Oh, then it's necessary. You should have under cabinet. I should have rated it much lower. And that one light above their pantry, it's not in the right spot. It bugs me. What? I messed it up when I did it. I find it fine. I know. Okay, well, you gave it a 10. So. I did. I like our lighting. I our think kitchen you did a great is job. crushing it, according to you. There's still three categories left, so we'll see. Okay, here we go. All of these categories are important, but I think that this one is maybe the most important. And maybe it's because it's the crux of what I do. And that is layout. The layout of your kitchen really weighs heavy in determining how functional the space is going to be. Now, the problem is many people look at their kitchen that they're in now and they can't see it any other way. They can't visualize it. And that's okay, that's pretty normal. I do this a lot so it's easier for me to walk into a space and say, oh, this can go here and this can do this and it's gonna look great. And other people are like, I, I don't see that. So that's no problem if that's you. However, when you're working with your designer, make sure that you plan out different ideas for your layout so that you can see it in different ways. Sometimes there are no other options. You have the room you have, you can't really change anything. But you'll be surprised at the possibilities as you go through this process. It helps you be confident in making the final decisions on the layout of your space. When it comes to layout, there's a few things you should be concerned with. One is the kitchen triangle, and I don't adhere to that strictly, but just the idea that things are in places that make sense and aren't too far away from each other, making the kitchen efficient. You can follow the triangle to a T or forget it altogether. It doesn't really matter. By nature of designing your kitchen, you're going to put things in relatively normal locations for the way you want to use the space. But thinking through that, thinking through work zones, thinking through clearances, how many people are using the kitchen, how many appliances are going to be in that kitchen. You might have a double oven or two ovens or two dishwashers or two sinks. There's a lot of combinations of appliances that you can have in a kitchen. And all of that is part of the layout structure. There is no perfect kitchen layout, but there is one that works best for the space that you have. And that's the goal of working with your designer or yourself if you're trying to plan out your renovation. In the category of layout, I score my kitchen a nine out of 10. It is the most optimized layout for this space. The only thing I wish was different was a little deeper of an island. The next category is layout. Okay, so what do you mean exactly? Do you think there's a better way to design this kitchen or is this the optimal layout for this space? For this space? Yes. So without an addition? No, for this, without an addition, <laughs> for this space. Okay, for this space. Because if you're watching this, you have to deal with your space. So you have to judge this according to mm -hmm. what you have to deal with. So this is what we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Is it optimal for this space? Go ahead and put your answer down. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Ready? Yep. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I put a nine. I, I don't give anything a 10. Well, when we first moved into this place, yes, the kitchen was half of the size that it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was really bad. I like now, like, it's open. I love my island. Like, there's lots of, like, you can move around really well. Okay. 
Yeah, I I think it's. I'll go with that. I think now, if I had more space, which you don't, don't get me wrong, which you don't. If we could have an addition, no. Game changer. Yes, but we don't. The reason I scored a nine is because I think the island could be a little deeper. Oh, like oh, this way. Yeah, one? yeah. I think we could have made it a little deeper. Well, could we still? <laughs> Go on to the next one. Okay, what did I give it? A 10? Okay. Yes. Okay, I gotta stop giving tens, but you gotta ask me a different question that I can score lower. To have a truly functional kitchen, it needs to be efficient. Now, you can have a great layout, great appliances, great lighting, lots of counter space, all the bells and whistles, but if your kitchen isn't efficient, meaning ease of use, then you can have a real problem on your hands. Thankfully, making your kitchen easy to use isn't that difficult because you can add things like inserts and tray dividers and spice organization and pull outs and pull downs and pull ups, all that stuff to an already existing kitchen. And if you're in the process of designing a kitchen and planning a big renovation, then you can think about work zones, the work triangle, you can think about clearances between counter spaces and how many people are using that space. You can think about drawer banks and pull outs, all of those things to help your kitchen work for you instead of you working in your kitchen. Efficiency can be the answer to whether or not you want to have an island or a peninsula. Which ones of those would make the most sense for you? Or it could be the answer between, do I tear down that wall or do I not tear down that wall? Having an open concept versus a more closed off space because that wall could be used for other purposes. It might be more efficient to have the wall there than to tear it out. Knowing your efficiency score is really important because you can instantly improve your kitchen's IQ just by adding a few little things here and there to make your space easier to work in. I've graded my kitchen's efficiency score at a nine out of 10. All right, you ready for the next mm -hmm. one? Efficiency. How easy is the kitchen to use? Uh, okay. Oh, of course. Now what, you gonna give it a one? Because <laughs> you give everything else tens? Maybe, I don't know How yet. How easy is the kitchen to use? Okay, lay it on me. 7.5, <laughs> what? I gave it a nine. What? No, the, the microwave. All right, all right, the microwave. The microwave was definitely our downfall. Okay, um, I'll give you that. And on one of your videos, you had a really cool thing to reach stuff in upper cabinets. We don't have that. We don't. I'm only like, what, five, four at best. And those cabinets are high and it's hard to get things out of them. Okay. So high cabinets that I can't get stuff out of and the microwave. So it's not very efficient. 7.5? 7 7.5. That's where I'm going. I think that's a little harsh. <laughs> I, I give it a nine. There's a broken microwave in our island that <sighs> serves us zero purpose. I don't okay. see that being efficient. Okay. Okay, <laughs> so that's why I gave it a nine. Everything else I think is pretty efficient. Well, for me, but I'm taller. But you're tall. And so I have to ask you to get stuff out of the top cabinet all the time. You know it's true. And you hide treats up in your, <laughs> in your cupboard because you know that no one will find them. That's efficient. <laughs> Except one day they were found. Okay. The final category to consider is aesthetics. Yes, this doesn't really relate to functionality, but I do think it's important that we don't separate these two things. Having a functional kitchen that looks great is very, very important and gives an overall feel to the space. And some kitchens can feel like you just don't want to be in them. And other spaces can be a little warmer. Now, if you've been paying attention, you've noticed that my kitchen is white. I think it's a timeless look. I love white kitchens. I'm not afraid to say so. Many of you don't like white kitchens. And for that reason, you'll have all kinds of other colors that suit your aesthetic style, the thing that you love. And that's really important. So once you get your design, once it's efficient, once it's organized, once it's laid out really, really well, once you get all the lighting and all that stuff, make sure that you spend some time finding out the thing and the style that you really like and diving into that, investing in that so that you can create a space that is inviting and warm and that you really love to be in. For me, I score the aesthetic of my kitchen because it's white and I love it at a nine out of 10. <laughs> you ready for the last category? I'm ready. The last category is aesthetics, the style. I gotta think about it. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, what is it? A nine. A nine. 
I gave it a nine too. Okay. Why did you give it a nine? I want to know why you gave it a nine first. Okay, I gave it a nine because I designed it. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. It's white. Yeah. It's shaker. Mm-hmm. And I like white shaker, and I like white kitchens. Yeah. And I like our little llama thing. Other than that, and I like the fixtures. Mm-hmm. I just like white kitchens. I know. Why did you give it a nine? Because if I had to do it again, I wouldn't do a white kitchen. <laughs> Well, why did you give it a nine then? Why did you give it a five? <laughs> because I love, I love my kitchen. I, just, I like the white. I just think if we were going to do it again, I would do like the island a different color or would you like the base cabinets different? Um, cause we did that other renovation and I really liked like that sagey green color. And I was like, Oh, if I had to do it again, I would probably add a bit more color. I say that. But then at the same time, white, like you can do anything with it. So it's super versatile. So I like that. Okay. I just, I guess I, I just wish I was a little braver. Okay. Next time. Although it wasn't me that designed it. You made the call on that. <laughs> Next time we'll <laughs> add some color. My overall score for Kitchen IQ was 82%. Mine was 87. I'm absolutely shocked that your kitchen score was higher than mine. <laughs> I thought yours would be like 60%. <laughs> I thought you'd just trash me completely. But, you, but you're pretty happy with this kitchen. I am. Hear that, everyone? She's pretty happy with the kitchen. <laughs> Which means you can be happy with your kitchen, too, if you book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me so we can go over the weeds of your kitchen to make sure you have the most optimized kitchen design possible. There's a link in the description below. So 84.5% is our kitchen's IQ. And I'd like to know what your kitchen IQ is. Leave it in the comments below. Check out this video for 50 tips that took me 20 years to learn. And hopefully you can get them in like 20 some minutes. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.